So hello everyone. So welcome to our this week progress in fishing AI seminar talk. And this is our first talk in the new semester. And today we're very glad to have Professor Lei Jiang from the Indiana University Bloomington to give us this talk. Uh, Professor Jiang is currently assistant professor in the Department of Intelligent System Engineering at Indiana University. He obtained his PhD from the University of Pittsburgh and a bachelor degree from the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. And uh, his research interests include the hardware accelerated design and the privacy preserving machine learning. And uh, he have done a lot of the very pioneering work in this the uh, privacy preserving machine learning algorithm and hardware co-design and published in many wonderful works uh, in the Europe cycle, ICM and so on. So now let's welcome Professor Zhang to give us this talk. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, thank everyone here for attending my presentation. Um, I'm very glad to share our work on uh, fully homomorphic encryption based, FHE based uh, machine learning today here. Um, so let's start. Um, I think nowadays the machine learning is the dominant approach to solving a wide range of uh, problems such as uh, computer viewing and natural, I'm sorry, natural language processing. I, I need to read. Reset this. Yeah, uh, I can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Now, nowadays, the the machine learning is the dominant approach to to solve a wide range of uh, um problems like uh, computer vision, um, natural language processing, um, and the recommender system. Um, however, it's very difficult for the average user to train a neural network themselves. Um, uh, this is because training a powerful and accurate machine learning model require uh, first a lot of uh, training data. Uh, nowadays, the training data can be at a terabyte level. Uh, second, uh, super long GPU hours. If you want to train a transformer, then basically you need a tens of a GPU to run maybe four weeks. Uh, last but not the least, you also need a rich domain expertise. Um, what type of uh, regulation method you, you need um, during the training uh, is a big problem. So that's the reason why average user cannot train a uh, accurate and powerful model themselves. Um, machine learning as a service is a very effective method to enable average user to access the powerful uh, and accurate neural network model uh, in the cloud uh, produced by large uh, cloud computing companies like uh, Google, uh, Facebook, and Microsoft, and Amazon. Um, so in the process of uh, machine learning as a service, the user can you know, just send uh, his or her raw data, input data to the cloud. Um, and then the server can do the inference directly on the input data, and generate an output, and send the output back to the user. So during this process, actually the server can know the input and the output. So it's a very relevant for average user to share their private data like a healthcare record or any financial data. No, nobody want to do that. Nowadays, the government regulation even forbids uh, the private data sharing between clients and uh, uh, some large companies um, like uh, the CCPA and uh, California Consumer Privacy Act and some European laws. So it's really important to 
make sure we have very good data privacy uh, in the machine learning as a service. Well, the fully homomorphic encryption, FHE, can help us to solve this problem. Most FHE scheme uh, support uh, cipher test addition and cipher test multiplication. So the idea here is very simple. Um, the sum of two encrypted variables is equal to um, the encrypted sum of two, these two variables. We have the same thing for the multiplic multiplication. So during the um, cloud computing, a, a user can do an addition on A and B locally. He or she can also encrypt the A and encrypt the B and send only two cipher tests to the server in the cloud. And the server can do uh, an addition homomorphically and then return the um, encrypted A and B. So these two values should be the same. Beyond simple addition and multiplication, um, Pyrework also create an FHE-based neural network uh, for machine learning as a service. So the, in the context of machine learning as a service, a user can encrypt uh, his or her um, raw input into cipher tests and send only the cipher tests to the server in the cloud. And then the server can do computation homomorphically um, on the cipher test and generate an encrypted output and return this output back to the user. Only the user has the secret key. So only the user can do the decryption and know the results. So during this process, we have a end-to-end -end, um, FHE uh, encrypted data flow. So this encrypted data flow can protect uh, the data privacy of average user. Um, during this process of machine learning as a service uh, with a FHE based neural network, um, it's very flexible for the user. The user can even uh, go offline uh, during the computation after sending the cipher tests to the server because there is a no frequent communication between the server and the user during this process. So it's very good for the IoT device. Um, again, um, we don't have a too, too frequent uh, uh, communication. Uh, however, um, the FHE is very time consuming um, and very uh, complex, um, computationally expensive. Um, so we needed to uh, spend a lot of time in computing the FHE-based uh, scheme. Another disadvantage of uh, FHE is that it cannot support the nonlinear operation well, uh, which means that um, if we use FHE to uh, implement a neural network, the accuracy may not be high. So the first FHE-based neural network is called CryptoNets. Um, which is created by Microsoft. It has spent 40 seconds uh, to inference a amnist image, very small image actually. So in this talk, uh, I will introduce four works, uh, recent works from my group. Uh, three of them are algorithm work. Um, the last one is a hardware level work. So one um, inference, FHE-based inference of crypto nets on a small amnist image cost nearly 40 seconds. However, if we do the same thing uh, on the plan test unencrypted data, it costs only less than 0 0.01 second. So there is a um, more than 5,000 times latency gap. Beyond the latency, long latency, um, 
the accuracy of the FHE-based neural network is not high either. Um, for a plan test neural network, for unencrypted neural network, if we try to integrate more and more layers into the uh, neural network, uh, the accuracy should go up and the error rate should, should go down. This is so-called a deep architecture, deep neural network architecture. However, if we do the same thing for the FHE, uh, then the error rate actually go up. I will explain why we have this phenomenon. So we need a low latency and a high accurate, um, high accuracy neural network. And here is one very simple example of a neural network. The fundamental unit is actually a neuron. In a neuron, we have multiple weights. And we also have multiple inputs. So during the inference, we need to compute um, the multiplication between inputs and the weights, and then sum all the intermediate results together, and then do a nonlinear ReLU activation on the final result. So the FHE, for most FHE scheme, um, they have no problem with the multiplication and accumulation because they can support multiplication and addition on the cipher test. However, for the nonlinear ReLU, um, most uh, FHE scheme has difficulties. So this is the reason why CryptoNets actually replace all the ReLU in a neural network by square bar function. The square bar function is a uh, um, x to two, which is actually a degree two polynomial. They actually use this degree two polynomial to approximate uh, the ReLU operation. Uh, although the square bar function can bring some nonlinearity, um, you can see there is a huge difference between these two curves. And that's the reason we uh, will have a lot of error in the activation layer. So if we stack multiple um, activation layer together, um, the error will be enlarged. That's the reason why when we try to integrate more and more layers, and the FHE-based neural network actually has lower accuracy. So when you see the degree two approximation uh, polynomial um, here, uh, one very simple question you may ask, uh, how about to use a higher degree? polynomial to approximate uh, activation. Uh, we tried that. We actually used the degree two, degree three, degree uh, four and five uh, approximation polynomial to approximate the activation. Um, we can see that uh, from this figure, the error rate actually slightly decreases. And so the higher degree approximation po polynomial actually works. Unfortunately, uh, the execution time of one inference also significantly increases. Now 99% of the uh, latency is actually consumed by the degree five approximation polynomial activation. This is not good. We need a fast uh, and accurate ReLU. Then we propose our first technique, SHE. So the FHE um, principle can be implemented by uh, many schemes, including some worldwide scheme like BGV, BFV, CKKS. They support a multiplication and addition. We also have some uh, so-called bitwise uh, fully homomorphic encryption scheme like uh, TFHE and uh, FHEW. Because the TFHE is faster, so in this talk, I mainly uh, focus on the TFHE. So the TFHE can support a homomorphic Boolean algebra, uh, like uh, a homomorphic XOR gate or a homomorphic NAN gate. By these binary logic gates, we can build uh, any computation we like by TFHE gates. So TFHE uh, is more powerful than the um, 
worldwide FHE scheme like BGV, BFV, CKKS. Um, for those worldwide FHE scheme, they encrypt an integer or a fixed point number as a whole. So if we have a DG, uh, if we have an integer 10, then they can encrypt this 10 uh, as one number. However, if we use TFHE to process this uh, integer, we need to decouple this integer into four bits. And TFHE only support one bit uh, message. Uh, we need to encrypt each bit uh, independently. So here we have a four cipher test, actually. And then we can perform homomorphic logic operation on the cipher tests. Um, by homomorphic logic gates, we can easily build a circuit to compute the ReLU operation. So if the TFHE is so good, why Pyrework didn't use it? Uh, the answer is very simple. So for most worldwide FHE scheme, one multiplication can be done by one homomorphic multiplication. It's just a one operation. However, if we use TFHE to compute the multiplication, we need to break this operation into more than 16 operations. So the multiplication on TFHE is actually very slow. If we naively use TFHE to build a neural network, although the error rate will be very low, um, and the latency of the inference also will be significantly increased. From this figure, we can see that actually the bottleneck of the TFHE-based neural network mm -hmm. is from the convolution layer and the fully connect layer. These two types of layers um, has a lot of uh, multiplications. So one simple idea is that uh, can we reduce the, or remove the multiplication in the inference of a neural network? So we try to use log two quantization uh, to remove the multiplications. We quantize each weight to its 22W representations. For example, if one weight is a 0.6, then we try to approximate it into 0.5, which is a 2 to minus 1. A input 10 multiply this uh, 0.6 number is a approximately equivalent to uh, this 10 mu multiply um, 0.5, which is a 2 to minus 1. Then we can do a right binary shift. Uh, we actually shift uh, this number by the input uh, to the left. I'm sorry, to the right by one bit. Because the um, TFHE actually encrypts each bit independently, so it's very convenient for us to do the shift operation without very large overhead. Now the multiplication and the accumulation will be converted to shift operation and accumulation. So in this way, when we apply the log2 quantization and the TFHG on a neural network, uh, we can achieve very low latency, but maintain the same accuracy as the TFHG neural network. So now we can reduce the uh, inference latency of a MNIST image to 9.3 seconds. So the TFHG can help us to achieve a very accurate ReLU operation. And the log2 quantization can help us to reduce the overhead of multiplications. Um, by these two techniques, we can reduce the uh, inference latency on the MNIST image to uh, 9.3 seconds. Our work also proposed another uh, FHE-based neural network called LOLA. It can reduce the latency of this MNIST image to 2.2 uh, seconds. Now the gap uh, is approximately more than 300 times. LOLA actually take advantage of the batching operation uh, to achieve low latency um, by FHE-based scheme. So when you have multiple integers, 
for the worldwide FHE-based scheme, you can actually in encrypt these numbers into one single cipher test. And then we can perform so-called single instruction, multiple data uh, computation on the cipher test. So when we perform a homomorphic addition on two cipher tests, between two cipher tests, we actually perform um, four additions on each number slot in this particular example. Um, we have one plus one, uh, two plus two, three plus three, and four plus four. We have the same thing on the multiplication part. Um, this is good because we actually batch multiple integers into one single cipher test. We also need a rotation operation. Uh, the rotation can actually move uh, the number slot inside a cipher test um, by some offset. In this example, we just move all the uh, number slot uh, to the left by one slot. Now the two, that number two is the first element in the cipher test, but the number one is the last um, number in the cipher, cipher test. So the so-called sim, the computing style is very good. Uh, potentially, um, we can achieve uh, thousands of uh, um, throughput improvement. But the rotation um, is very slow particularly the matrix vector multiplication need a lot of rotations. So this is what we typically do for the plan test uh, vector matrix multiplication. We just do the uh, multiplication uh, between W and X and then accumulate the result together. However, if we want to do this in the uh, FHE domain, we need to encrypt the W into a cipher test, um, and then the X into another cipher test, and then do a sim the multiplication between them. After we have the intermediate results, we need to do the rotation, and then do sum, and then continue to do the rotation and the sum until we have the final output. So during this process, we need a lot of rotations. Unfortunately, the latency of the rotation is very long. Um, it's much longer than the FHE uh, multiplication. Um, so one natural question is that it can be reduce the rotation uh, in a neural network. The answer is yes, we can continue to use the quantization to quantize the weights. And this time we can quantize the weights into a block circulant circuit, a block circulant matrix. Uh, in, in a block circulant matrix, uh, we can use only one row to represent the entire uh, weight matrix. Uh, for example, we have the first row, and then we can do shift operation to generate the other rows. So during the vector multiplication, um, we can do um, FFT and the inverse FFT. Um, we can perform FFT um, on both the weight and the input, and then do only coefficient-wise multiplications. And then a inverse FFT can help us to achieve the final result. Because in this example, we do not have a uh, sum operation, so we do not need a uh, uh, rotation. So during the training of a neural network, uh, we can quantize the weights into different uh, block circulant circuits, and this is um, this is what we will do for convolutional layer and fully connected layer. And then during the inference, we only do a small number of uh, FFT and uh, um, inverse FFT, um, and then we can all do uh, the coefficient-wise multiplication without a large number of uh, rotations. So by doing this simple block circulant-based uh, quantization, uh, we can reduce the latency uh, 
of a amnesty image um, by 47%. Now the latency on a very small image is very short. Uh, then we can try some larger data set like CIFAR-10. Um, for a CIFAR-10 image, we can reduce the latency by uh, more than six times. So now our scheme can reduce the latency of a amnest image to 1.2 seconds. Um, a more recent prior work um, proposed EVA uh, to reduce this latency to 0.6 seconds. So now the latency gap between the plan test inference and the FHE based inference um, to around uh, 85, 85 times. Uh, so the EVA actually take advantage of the mobile neural network uh, architecture to reduce the rotation and the multiplication inside a neural network. Um, particularly, the EVA take advantage of so-called squeeze net to do that. Uh, the squeeze net actually convert a, a convolutional layer with a very large um, convolution kernel into two different layers. Uh, each layer ha now has a, a much smaller kernel. Um, and um, maybe much smaller input channel number. So at least the comparison between the, a convolutional layer and a squeezed net layer in this table, we can see that by using the mobile neural network, uh, it can significantly reduce the rotation number and the multiplication number uh, in a FHE-based neural network. This is the reason why EVA can achieve latency reduction. However, um, EVA didn't consider a fact that um, the FHE is actually very uh, sensitive to its uh, computational depths. So original, originally for a convolutional layer, uh, the computational depth of FHE is just one. However, if we apply the uh, squeeze net layer uh, into this network architecture, then we actually we actually doubled uh, uh, computational depth. Um, so a doubled computational depth will increase the computing overhead of each operation in a FHE-based um, neural network. Here is uh, uh, the compu computing complexity of a multiplication, uh, addition, and the rotation of a uh, FHE-based neural network. We can see that uh, the complexity of uh, addition is actually linear scales with the computing depths. Uh, and the complexity of a multiplication and the rotation uh, of FHE is actually linear scales with the um, depth square. So a larger depth actually make every uh, FHE operation slower. Then when we design the FHE uh, neural, architect neural network architecture, uh, we will have a problem. Um, we can choose to use the normal CNN layer or squeeze net uh, architecture. Uh, if we choose the CNN layer, then we have a smaller computing depth. Each operation uh, will be faster. But if we choose the squeeze net uh, layer, uh, we have a less number of uh, operations inside uh, this layer. But each operation may be slower due to the increased uh, computing, computational depth. So whether we do the squeeze or not is a problem. Uh, for the EVA, it uh, except uh, the first and the last uh, convolutional layer, it uh, used all uh, squeeze net layer uh, in the middle of this neural network. 
and we run the neural network on our CPU baseline and record all the latency overhead here. So we didn't propose any fancy search algorithm. We just try to replace um, the squeeze net layer. Here we call it a fire module um, by convolutional layer and then check whether we have a uh, latency reduction or not. Uh, after we try all the possibilities here, uh, we find out that for the first several layers, because they have very small computational depths, we definitely prefer um, squeeze net module or squeeze net layers. However, in the last few layers, uh, we should use CNs um, because uh, the double the computational depths will significantly increase the uh, overhead of each uh, FHE operations here. Uh, in this case, we definitely want to have a more operation, but uh, you know each operation should be faster. This can be achieved by the convolutional uh, layers. By this sim simple scheme, uh, we can reduce the latency um, on CFRNet image by almost 50%. So I, summarize, uh, so I summarized the result of three of our uh, algorithm level work in this um, figure. Um, only our first technique, SHE, can actually increase the uh, accuracy of the FHE based on your network because we do have a more accurate uh, activation uh, operation. For all the other uh, two works, um, they can only reduce the latency, but achieve the same accuracy. Now we actually reduce the gap, latency gap on a amnist image to only um, 40 times. Uh, so I have done um, the three algorithm level work. Um, you can see that one inference still costs 0.4 second, which is a very slow actually. That's the reason why we want to propose um, some hardware specific, uh, some application specific hardware to accelerate uh, the FHE based neural network. Um, because of the speed uh, of FHE based scheme, um, a pyro work actually proposed a lot of uh, accelerators, including CPU, GPU, uh, and ASIC-based accelerators. Um, because one typical FHE-based uh, uh, multiplication actually costs uh, several seconds for some particular uh, parameters. Uh, Intel created their own uh, libraries so that they can use the uh, long AVX 512 instruction to accelerate uh, FHE uh, operations. And people also try to implement a different uh, FHE scheme on GPUs. Uh, however, the, the difficulty here is that GPU cannot support large integers. Although nowadays GPU can support 8-bit uh, or 16-bit integers, um, GPU cannot support a 128-bit integer. Uh, so it's not very easy to implement FHE on GPUs. On the contrary, recent work proposed multiple um, FPGA-based or ASIC-based accelerator for FHE-based neural network. Here are two examples, but both of them uh, only accelerate uh, the so-called worldwide uh, FHE-based scheme, such as the BGV, BFV, and CKKS. So in this talk, we proposed the first uh, accelerator for TFHE, which is actually the bitwise FHE scheme. Because uh, it's bitwise uh, scheme, um, the plan test message can be only one and zero. And then we need to 
um, randomly generate a secret key uh, and a random vector. Um, these two actually are polynomials. Their degree are n, and we also need to sample some noise. During the encryption, we need to add some noise uh, into the plan test message so that we can uh, you know, actually hide our message, real message inside this noise. During the decryption, we need to run the, this noise off uh, to correctly do the decryption. If the noise is very large, we may have a decryption failure in this case. So each homomorphic operation, like a NAND gate or gate, will increase the noise a little bit. That's the reason why at the end of each uh, logic gates, we need a bootstrapping to keep the noise in check. Um, you can consider the bootstrapping as homomorphically decrypting um, this cipher test and remove the E, which is the noise. So um, the bootstrapping involve a lot of uh, uh, polynomial multiplications. If we directly do a polynomial uh, multiplications, the time complexity is n square. Here, n is the degree of the polynomial. However, if we apply FFT on each polynomial, um, and then we only need to do uh, coefficient-wise multiplication on them, so in this way, we can reduce the polynomial multiplication um, time complexity from uh, n square to n log n. Um, although we have already used FFT and uh, IFFT, the bootstrapping is still very slow. Each bootstrapping costs uh, 30 milliseconds. You can see that if you have a computer um, whose gate can each gate will cost a, a, a 13 millisecond. This CPU will be very slow. The frequency of a such CPU is a even smaller than one megahertz. Uh, and then we do some uh, benchmarking on the uh, different uh, uh, TFHG logic gates. We find out actually the bootstrapping operation dominant the gates. Uh, it costs 99% of the latency in each operation. Um, particularly, FFT and IFFT are very time consuming in the bootstrapping. So, the FFT and the IFFT are very slow in the bootstrapping. And uh, the bootstrapping can help the gate and uh, to you know, tolerate some errors. Um, Inside each gate, we have a bootstrapping, and this bootstrapping can reduce the uh, errors. Um, which means that uh, can we actually intentionally generate some errors to accelerate uh, the bootstrapping? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we can try to use approximate FFT and uh, inverse FFT to accelerate the bootstrapping. Um, we need to make sure the error does not uh, you know, uh, be larger than some threshold. Um, if the error is smaller than some, some threshold, uh, we can do some composition on the total factor of the FFT and the IFFT. So in this way, we can reduce the um, power consumption of each uh, FFT and IFFT unit uh, in the in the accelerator and try to have more uh, computing units with the same power budget. So here is the um, flow of data flow of the FFT um, in a bootstrapping. We can quantize the total factor into some di dyadic values. Um, for one dyadic value, um, each number here can be break into uh, the combination of some uh, uh, two to n representations. 
um, when the number can be represented by two to n representations uh, during the multiplication, we only need to uh, uh, do the shifting, binary shift. This is a similar to our first technique, uh, SHE. Um, by the simple uh, quantization on the total factor, we can significantly increase the uh, bootstrapping throughput. Um, compared to the latest uh, ASIC accelerator, um, we can increase the throughput per watt by um, more than three times. So in this talk, I introduced three um, algorithm level work uh, to increase the accuracy um, and reduce the latency of uh, um, fully homomorphic encryption-based uh, neural networks. We also propose a um, accelerator to accelerate uh, the neural network. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lei. Thank you very much for a, a wonderful work. And uh, actually, I have several questions to ask, but before that, so I would like to offer an opportunity to our audience. So any questions from our audience? So you can unmute yourself or input your question in the chat box. I think I can, maybe I can. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, I, I, uh, I have one question. Uh, thanks a lot, Professor Jiang, and thanks a lot for the nice presentation. Uh, I have one question regarding the page uh, 16, regarding the first work, uh, the quantization, uh, sorry, the activation function is accurate for this game. Um, I don't know why. Can you please explain this? Can you repeat your question again? Uh, uh, in this SHE scheme, uh, the, the activation function uh, in, uh, a homomorphic encryption scheme is ac accurate for a high uh, final ac uh, accuracy. So I didn't realize the reason for this. Can you please explain this? So by the, uh, this is very good question. Um, actually. Uh, so by using the um, binary homomorphic logic gates, we can implement a accurate ReLU operation. So these ReLU operations are very critical to the accuracy of the neural network. Um, although we do some log two quantization in the convolutional layers, um, we can still achieve uh, the same accuracy as the you know original tfhe based uh, neural network did i answer your question uh, uh maybe one more question regarding this uh in the uh plain text domain example we have that relu just a, a, a two piecewise uh linear function right but uh is there some special representation in the uh cipher text domain for this the ReLU uh, is a nonlinear operation, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, although you can use a polynomial to approximate the ReLU, like this. In this example, they use a square degree two polynomial to approximate this ReLU. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you cannot have this ReLU. They have some differences. Um, so, yeah. You can try to increase the degree, approximation degree. You can use x25, x210. You can do that. Um, but again, the approximation result is not good. We tried degree five. Uh, although the, you know, the error rate slightly goes down, um, this is good. This is the advantage. Um, the latency significantly increases. If you use FHE to compute a such high degree, uh, polynomial, the overhead is very large. Okay, so, thanks a lot for the explanation. Uh, maybe one more question. Uh, this slide is pretty nice and uh, include ma much information meaningful to, uh, I guess, to us. Uh, so can we get access to this slide somewhere? Sure, no, pro no problem. 
So, so, so the, the, uh, so the entire talk will be recorded and uploaded to the YouTube. Yeah. Oh, YouTube. Okay. Okay. That's pretty nice. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Other questions from our audience? So actually I have some questions, yeah. Uh, so first a very wonderful talk. And uh, uh, I, I, was, uh, I was wondering, so whether if we use some other type of the activation function instead of a ReLU, and then we can like to achieve kind of good balance between the latency and the accuracy. Right now, for example, this slide shows that so a uh, very initial effort that we want to use some the higher degree of polynomial approximation to approximate ReLU. But if we like to replace the ReLU for some, use some other, uh, like the, the uh, leaky ReLU or some other activations, whether the performance, uh, we can achieve kind of better balance or trade off there. Okay, this is a very good question, actually. Um... ReLU is the um, simplest um, activation for modern neural network. Um, of course, we can have um, you know, more advanced uh, activations, but uh, all the activations here are nonlinear operation. So for example, you mentioned the leaky ReLU. Leaky ReLU actually needed to compare uh, multiple points here, we only need to compare against the zero. If it's larger than zero, it, it's X itself. Otherwise, it's zero. Uh, so the comparison inside FHE is actually very difficult. That's the reason why and people try to use square R to approximate that. For the leaky ReLU, we can definitely use TFHE to implement that activation, but we need to uh, use more comparison uh, operation uh, to achieve that. Uh, it's a slower, but I think uh, you can have a very good uh, accuracy improvement. And another question is that so right now it looks like so uh, in the algorithm community, so right now all the experiments are based on like the, the MNIST and so on. So how about if we further scale up the data set? So for example, whether it is right now, it is doable to do experiment on the for the FHE based on neural work on the like the CFAR ten and even for the ImageNet and so on. Whether it, yeah, if it, it is come too slow or um, the speed is uh, is not the first concern, but the, the nonlinear operation on large scale neural network is the biggest issue. Um, if you don't, do not have nonlinear operation for image net scale uh, neural network, the accuracy is not uh, very good. Um, but now the TF and now the FHE can handle CIFAR uh, 10 or CIFAR 100 um, level data set already. But for image net, it's very challenging. Okay. And, uh, another question is that so so I remember that you have one uh, one table. Yes. You, hear me? you have one table that shows that the, for the in the for the speed on the plain text. So for the MNIST, it's about it's kind of very very fast, right? Uh, yes, yes, this. yes. Uh, it's the latency actually. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 0.77 uh, second. And for FHE, it's about 40 seconds. And so, based on your optimization and so on, so right now we can reduce to like the, the second level. So, I uh, I was wondering so, so, whether we can obtain the further imp improvement via like to uh, providing more customized the GPU kernel and, uh, to accelerate the entire. Uh, inference and so on. Yes, so of in course. addition to the algorithm, uh, algorithm level optimizations. 
Yes, of course. Um, I believe the reason why now people pay more attention on FHE is that um, there are a lot of algorithm level innovations. Um, I, I, I mean, cryptographic innovations. Um, people create a lot of uh, new FHE scheme, which are faster, um, but maintain the same security uh, level. Um, and then we have a lot of algorithm level, uh, neural network level improvement. Uh, and then we can use more advanced architecture uh, hardware to do the acceleration. Um, now I believe there are a lot of group are working on how to uh, run FHE on GPUs. But again, uh, FHE are mainly about the polynomial multiplication additions. Those polynomial has very large coefficient. Each coefficient of the polynomial may, may be 128 bit, um, but a GPU cannot uh, you know, support uh, such large integer well. So that's the reason why more people pay more attention on the uh, um, FPGA. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know, so I know that like DARPA, they have, a, I think about two years ago, they have a new project to to ask the, the academia and the industry to build some of the ASIC chip to accelerate the FHE, right? I remember that. Yeah. Even there's some stuff in the Silicon Valley also working on that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I have some, some additional questions, but first, uh, is there any other questions from our audience? Oh, I have a following question regarding to the large data set. So you're talking about, so for now the FHE can now deal with the uh, large data set like the ImageNet. So when, you talk, when you're talking about it, I'm wondering, you mean that the accuracy will be lower or the latency is very, very large? The latency is, uh, is so it's, uh, the, the, compared to the plan test, of course, the latency is very high. Uh, this, is, this is for sure. But uh, uh, the late, long latency is uh, still tolerable. The, mm -hmm. the downside, the major difficulty is the accuracy because you don't have a, you know, <clears throat> accurate uh, nonlinear operation. It's really difficult for FHE to support a uh, image net scale network. Okay, so my understanding is that the low accuracy, because we know that so for the classification task, the image net classification is more challenging. But when you, when you were talking about the large data set, I was thinking about maybe it's about the data set scale, like how many data set, how many training data set we have for this task. But for now, from my understanding, it's not about like there are so many training data set where the image net input set is bigger than Zephyr 10 or MNIST. It's mainly about the classification difficulty, right? So it will introduce, uh, it will cause lower accuracy. That's why, that's why we can not deal with it right now. You, I mean, for the FHE. That's right. Now, that's, uh, do I understand it right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So okay, got it. So, Thanks. So for the training data set, it's one issue. Mm -hmm. After you have your training data set, we can use the, you know, the accuracy trained by this training data set as one baseline. And mm -hmm. when I talk about FHE cannot achieve high accuracy, I mean, um, based on this baseline accuracy, the FHE actually will degrade your accuracy because yeah, of the lake, yeah, because mm -hmm. of the lake of uh, nonlinear operations. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions from the audience? So, so actually I have a follow-up question. So since right now it's kind of difficult to design a kind of um, uh, accurate, uh, like the, the nonlinear activation function for the FHE on the largest scale data set. So I'm just roughly thinking, so whether we can just learn the activation function using an additional small neural network to do that. And this yes. small neural network, actually it is the ReLU, 
we use ReLU for that. But this model neural network actually essentially it performed to just to learn for the nonlinearity for the FHE. So this is just some of my, some of my very rough thoughts. No, no, this is a very good uh, uh, idea actually. Um, you can definitely to fine tune your neural network uh, uh, to make the neural network more comfortable. You know, when working with FHE, uh, for sure, because you know FHE will intentionally have some uh, you know errors, and the neural network itself can also tolerate some errors. And the error, the error generated by the activation, of course, it you know can be tolerable by the neural network. Okay. No matter you have smaller neural network uh, for the activation, or you know you combine the large and the small together. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, another question is about the uh, use one slide you mentioned used the, the circulant, a block circulant matrix. Yes. And uh, yeah. So here, so for the uh, uh, for the block circulant, so I assume that so actually you change the weight of the neural work, right? To make it to enforce that the block circulant the structure there, right? And uh, so my question is that because the, the uh, for the block circulant matrix, so the the matrix, uh, the FFT size is equivalent to, uh, is equivalent to the, the block size. So here, so for example, so, so what is the block size do you use here? Because we know that when the FFT size is, F, the number of the point of the FFT is kind of a small. So actually we cannot obtain the uh, considerable acceleration on the GPU or the CPU. Here, um, the, ma the major goal um, of adopting this uh, block circulant quantization is that we want to reduce the rotation uh, inside um, each cipher test. And the rotation operation actually is very slow. Um, okay. why, do we, why do we need a rotation? We, we, we have to accumulate all the results inside this cipher test together. Um, because okay. for, in this particular example, we need to accumulate all the Ys, but the Ys are batched in one cipher test. To add two Ys, we need to do rotation. So, so if my understanding was correct, so even we use kind of the, the small size FFT, even it is not kind of so fast, but as compared to the very slow rotation, we can still obtain some of the speed. That's right, that's right. Oh, okay, that's exactly, that's exactly. Okay, I, I understand right now. So I was wondering so why the rotation is so slow because not properly supported by the current CPU or the GPU library? No, the rotation is one FHE operation. It's a very complex um, polynomial operation. It involves multiple polynomial um, multiplications. You, you can, although I mentioned one rotation, but a CPU, GPU will do a lot of polynomial multiplication to achieve that rotation. Oh, okay, I see, I see. It's not a real rotation on the CPU. Okay, okay, it's I'll not see. kind of the ro rotated memory layer. Uh, that, that's right, layer. that's right. Okay, that's okay, right. I see. Thank you, thank you very much. So, very good. So, uh, any other questions from our audience? Okay, so if, so if no more questions, so let's thank our speaker again. So thank you very much, Lei. So it, it was a very interesting talk, very- Thank you, thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Bo. Okay. Also, thank, thank everybody to attend our this week's seminar talk and uh, see you next time. So because next week will be the triple AI and maybe uh, we will meet next week. So, uh, so I will post the, the, the updated schedule the, in my website and also post that at LinkedIn. Okay, thank you very much, Ara. Have a wonderful thank you. day. Thank bye. you, bye. bye. Thank you.